welcome back. Today I am super excited because I've been trying to get this video out for a year. Why a year? Because when we ordered the TerraFlex upgrade suspension for Rex's Jeep, uh, the Falcon shocks that come with it were on back order for 11 months. Obviously they were ordered during COVID and between that and everything else going on in the world, uh, they were just backlogged. So we finally got them in um, last month and we got them installed. So I've been driving this Jeep around with all of the suspension upgrades and the stock shocks for at least six, seven months. But now that the Falcon shocks are on, it is incredible. So let me get this thing out up in the air and I'll show you what we did. What I want to do is read you what this kit came with. If you bear with me, I'll be quick. It's the TerraFlex Sport ST3 suspension systems. There's, there's four different levels and we got the highest level. And that basically comes with the ST3 Falcon 3.3 shocks. So you have a choice below that of the 3.1, the 2.1, or no shocks. So let me just tell you what it came with. Three inch coil lift springs, six preset control arms, heavy duty forged adjustable front track bar, rear track bar bracket, speed bump and progressive bump stop kit for front and rear, front sway bar disconnects, which we didn't use and I'll tell you why in a little bit, rear sway bar links, coil spring retainers, front brake line anchors, rear brake line relocation um, lines, exhaust spacers, all the necessary hardware. Um, so, but that's not all we did. And you'll see by the front that there's a Falcon uh, steering stabilizer on there. That was an additional kit that we put on. And that uh, allows for uh, you to use that for the heavy duty or the stock tie rod. It gives a three-way adjustability of steering and handling characteristics with, and, and, and by choosing soft, medium, or firm, it also adjust your compression settings and you know you can use it to drive them you know every day and it's it's fantastic to have but we didn't just stop with those two kits we went a step further look at the diameter of that steering linkage bar that thing is huge we increased that dramatically we also uh, got an oversized track bar that came with the kit and if you take a look at the ball joints, those are Dyna track ball joints. Those are rebuildable ball joints. And not only are they rebuildable, you can rebuild them on the vehicle. You don't even need to take them out of the steering knuckles. So you'll also notice under the differentials that uh, I have skid plates. Those are rough country skid plates. Uh, TerraFlex has skid plates. They used to make them for the 44 and the 30. One thing that we really couldn't find at a reasonable price was a Dana 44 for the front. So, um, you know, like I, like I kind of say, you throw enough money at something and you can make it bulletproof. So Gary and, and uh, Chris over at GDS 4x4 in Maryville, they gutted the 44 and the 30 up front and they put all quality heavy duty parts in there. In addition to rebuilding the axles, those now have Eaton electric lockers hooked up to the painless wiring trail rocker switch on the interior, which I'll show you later. So now at the touch of a button, you can lock your diffs. So if you take a look here, this is another thing we did. We ordered these filler pieces. These are heavy duty brackets that we filled in the steering knuckle on the bottom that are welded in place, on top that's welded in place, and the control arm pockets where these beefy TerraFlex control arms go, those are all welded in in place to keep this thing super strong so you don't get that side to side deflection as the front enders articulating because God knows what this thing weighs now with all of this stuff on it. Um, and with all of the suspension components that we put on, we also put on the TerraFlex big brake kit this is the TerraFlex big brake kit. This thing is awesome. So you have this much uh, larger diameter rotor that's slotted. It allows you to use your factory calipers so you don't even need to buy calipers. This kit is very inexpensive. What they do supply you with is this 
is relocation bracket for your stock calipers to move them out further to grab all of that surface area. I'll put up some still photos of it with the wheels and tires off the Jeep so you can get a better look. And one of the other things that we also did was we put spacers on. Now Rex is running factory Rubicon rims and these are actually 12 by 35 inch Toyo uh, open countries and uh, you surprisingly they fit very well on the 8 inch rims and we didn't really need the spacers but we put them on gives it a little bit wider track and it gives it more of a an aggressive look but if he ever did go to aftermarket rims the spacers are already there and it's something else that you, he just wouldn't have to worry about in the future well as you can see here Rex has uh, lengthened sway bar links on his front sway bar. The kit came with the adjustable sway bar links, and, but we didn't use them, and, I, and I'll tell you why. First of all, Rex doesn't rock crawl this Jeep. He trail rides it. Outside LA, they have a million acre recreational vehicle park that, that you can go and, and do almost anything. So most of its trails, there are rocks, there are, uh, you know, gravelly areas, but the, we're not talking huge giant boulders and, and three and four foot drops like Rubicon and, and Moab. So they trail ride this thing and they and they travel at a relatively, you know, brisk speed. So he doesn't need the detachable sway bar links because he doesn't have that articulation. And so why not just put them on anyway to have them? Well, because they're, they're a clevis pin setup. They're not electrical, they're mechanical. So you have washers on top and bottom and they go through they're a tapered pin they go through a hole and you put a clevis pin in there and then when you want to do anything you got to crawl under your jeep pull the pin and then everything is just loose and 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 swinging around and they make noise on the street which is where this gets driven a lot they make noise and it's kind of annoying so i mean he doesn't need it so it's kind of a waste just to put up with that type of aggravation okay well now at the rear you can see the heart of the kit, the Falcon shocks. These things are incredible. You have three settings. One is soft for street. You have three over here, which is firm for off-road, which automatically adjusts your compression stroke to not bottom out the shock. And two in the middle uses this black knob and you can adjust anywhere between one and three to your, to your liking in the type of uh, conditions that you're driving on. So they're really cool, easy to adjust. You know, you don't need a jack to get under here. They're placed properly. They're uh, well indicated. There's an arrow on here to let you know where you're at and what setting you're on. And no matter, as long as this is in one or three, it doesn't matter where this black knob is. It's just that if you're in two, you don't even need to have them all set up at the same, depending upon how much weight you have on one side or on the front or on the rear. It's fully, fully customizable in setting two. This is also TerraFlex's um, skid plate for the Falcon shocks on the rear, because you can see without this, if you come down on something, you're going to run a $3,000 pair of shocks, or at least tear one of them off. And you punch a hole in these gas cylinders or something, and then it's useless. So this was a great investment. You can weld them on or bolt them on. I don't know if you can see over here, these are bolted on. And they, uh, they you drill a locating hole through the original bracket. And there's a grade 8 bolt up here that put them in place that lines them up. And then they provide a super huge long bolt that go through with the shock. So the shock actually helps hold this in place as it's bolted to the factory bracket. But these things are beefy. And uh, I'll show you the front ones after we get done going over the rear. So the kit, this is the uh, relocation bracket for the rear track bar. It's got more adjustability on it. Um, this is also uh, welded on. And you have this U-bolt clamp here to get it aligned. So all of this is, this isn't going to move. This is, this is welded on to the axle tube. Uh, rough Country rear skid plate. You got the new springs bumpers, obviously your control arms. We did the same thing on the control arm pockets back here. These are all welded in with the heavy duty plates to keep that deflection out of the control arm pockets. 
And again, same as the front, we have the TerraFlex big brake kit on the back, factory caliper with their relocation bracket mounted on there. Here's a view of the rear brake caliper from the uh, rear tire. And you can see compared to looking at a stock wheel, uh, stock brake setup, how far that's been moved out. So here is the front Falcon shock, the left front Falcon shock. You can see, easy to reach, you can flip, setting two, setting three, and then back to one. So this didn't require any modification on this driver's side, it went in perfect. Uh, you can see down below here, the TerraFlex control arm, lower control arm, much, much beefier than factory. And this is the right front shock again easy to reach make your adjustments i ended up having to cut a little bit of the inner fender well i cut a lot of the inner fender well out and i didn't you wouldn't need to if you don't have the rugged ridge snorkel like we do this is actually hitting up against the snorkel and i had to modify the snorkel so the uh the inner fender well got cut out a little bit more than i'd like and I'm going to replace it eventually when we do the hemi swap. The snorkel I'm going to remodify. I, I'm going to get another, uh, buy a, a whole new kit. Uh, it's damaged in a couple places, especially up at the top where this is cracked and it's letting water in anyway. So, uh, but we like the snorkel and it works with the Rugged Ridge roll bar. It's just that that shock's hitting it. So I'll be able to take care of that next summer. Okay, this is the Rugged Ridge Trail Rocker Rocker Panel, and this is really cool. So it came with five switches like this, and it's a uh, single pull, double throw. Uh, you can also get rocker switches like this. This is double pull, double throw. Yeah, so you have your in and your out for your wench, spring loaded back to neutral. And then these are custom switches, and you can see they have icons, and then they have the words down here what they are. So this is neat, this is, these switches are customizable. You can choose the color of your light bulbs and you can choose to have the top, the bottom, or both light up. So when I turn the lights on, these words down here at the bottom light up so you can see what the switch is at night. And then when you turn it on, the icon lights up. So you can see here, this Jeep has a light bar on top, LED light bar. They also have a million icons. You can choose your icons. This has a diff with the drive shaft coming out the back for your front. That's your electric locker. This has a diff with the drive shaft coming out the front or the back. So that's your that's your rear locker. And when you turn these on, they'll all light up. So uh, it's pretty cool. And um, we're, we have this, this isn't attached to anything. It's probably gonna be for some auxiliary lighting when he gets his camper set up. So uh, with these switches, like I said earlier, we didn't use the Eaton wiring harness for the um, electric lockers. We use the trail rocker kit and all you have to do is hook up power and ground because everything else is already in place. We had this in before we even had any accessories to put on it. So. You know, it sat in the Jeep until we needed something. We we actually had uh, three different lights on these switches. His light bar is made up of three different individual LED light combinations, as you can see there. And we had each one on a switch, you know, and why not? You don't have anything else to use them for. But now they're all on this. We have the lockers on those two, and we have one left over for anything else he wants. So this is the trail rocker kit by Painless. It actually bolts into two holes that are already in the plastic battery surround that goes here to keep the heat away. And this is option op for the optional winch switch. This goes all the way out to the front servos, which sit underneath the compartment here. And then you have you have power ground, and then I have a dual top batter, uh, side post top mount post battery, and the winch hooks up over there onto the side mounts. Everything else is at the top mount. And then here, here's your wires. So a lot of these are extras for uh, additional lighting and additional um, two position switches, but basically you have power and ground. So here's all my grounds hooked up to 
the factory ground lug and then my wires are just spliced in here underneath the conduit. That's all it takes. It's pretty cool. This even has, this bolt even has a rubber O-ring under it to keep water out should water get under the hood. And if you take the cover off, so you have all of your relays and fuses are there as well as on the inside if you take it off. So I'll give you an overall uh, quick tour here. Uh, when my sons and I both played a lot of Call of Duty and Rex loves Jeeps, always has. And when they came out with a special edition Call of Duty Jeep, we didn't run right out and buy one because it's just an appearance package really with some bumpers. We bought the badges and we set out from the beginning, 2012, we bought this brand new to make our own. So we have the, we actually have the Jeep Modern Warfare Rock Rails is about all we have besides the badges. We've obviously talked about the uh, Rugged Ridge Snorkel, which works in conjunction with the Rugged Ridge Light Bar. Uh, the back of the snorkel is actually recessed for the wiper blade, but it's a pain in the butt to change. I just put a 12-inch wiper blade on, and I can, I can pull this out. Um, we have the JL hood latches on here, which are wonderful. Uh, the Rubicon rims, which I got off of Craigslist for $400, and I actually got five of them. I did, we did buy the, the hood. I prepped and painted that here at the house myself. Rex and I made custom bumpers front and rear. And if you'll notice, Rex likes the factory flares, as do I. And when we made these, we made sure that the angles came down with the flare and that they, they tapered in on the sides with the side of the flare and that they came across the front parallel with the front of the flare. So those are tailor-made to those flares because they're staying on there. Uh, we got the hinge, the, uh, excuse me, we got the worn 10,000 pound winch hidden away pretty well. And we have the uh, Jeep three bar rear taillight protectors. I'm not sure if those are Call of Duty specific, but they were really hard to find. The back, here's our back bumper, which we made. It's a swing out tire carrier. Let me keep the weight off that bumper. You know, those bumpers didn't cost much for me to make. I think I was probably all in at 650, 700. This handle and striker, this is like a door latch striker. And then it comes with this handle was a kit for, I don't know, 20 bucks. This cylinder with the cap is from JCR, comes with roller bearings and a and a spindle like a car wheel. I think that was 25 bucks. This lock spring-loaded locking pin I bought for 10. And now the weight is off the tailgate so that when you're off-road and you're not beating the crap out of it. I did retain uh, the factory receiver. This Jeep does have the towing package. And as you can see there, we have a rear backup camera attached to our Kenwood head unit, which has wireless Apple CarPlay. So we have all the nav and everything we want. And I also have a front camera. Now, the front camera is not as um, useful as the, the new factory ones on the Gladiators. We got the big bar in the way and it's hard to get the angle down with the winch up and the cover on, but it does help. JW speaker LED headlights which were very expensive, but Rex tried different brands of LED headlights and they just don't last. Keep in mind that those LED headlights are not heated. So if you live in a snowy area, you need to keep that in mind. He lives in LA, so it's not really gonna be too much of an issue with him. We do have both tops. We have the soft top, which I bought off Craigslist for $500. And we have the factory hard top, which it came with. On the inside, we have the Rugged Ridge um, mats. This is something I came up with on myself. This is a mag light holder. There's one on each side of the front seat. These are just mag light clips that I bought off of Amazon. I, I think I bought a, a dozen a sets, uh, some aluminum stock, and I just put the flashlight in the holders, marked the holes, drilled it, and then there's two holes that I drilled, and the holes are actually in both sides of the seat. So you don't even have to drill into the seat mount, into the seat mounts. 
So we have those there. Obviously we talked about the trail rocker panel switch. There's our Ken, Kenwood head unit. And eventually when we do the Hemi swap, we're gonna get some custom gauges. Jeep handholds, quick release fire extinguisher. And you know, you gotta have it. All right, so the fire extinguisher's in and I can get to it from either the side window, I can unzip it, or you can get it from the back or from behind this um, seat on the driver's side. And all you do is grab it, push forward, and it comes off with a quick release. And then to put it back on, you just click it in like that. And it's pretty sturdy. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we're not done yet with this Jeep. Next spring, we're gonna start on the Hemi swap. Uh, 6'4", 392 is gonna go in it. And we also have a auxiliary fuel tank in the works that goes right here on the driver's side between the front and rear tires. And he wants to get this, uh, this is a hard safari top with the pop-up camper on the back. So that's the goal for this thing. Um, still got projects to do, so stay tuned. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna be unavailable for about six months, so this is probably gonna be the last video till next spring, early summer. I may make it to Joliet one last time and do a follow-up on my friend Rob's D150 truck. So we'll see how that goes, but stay tuned and thanks for watching.